Welcome to the Line Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that show up on these vehicles as they age, do it to make sure the sellers are honest in their disclosures and in their presentation of the vehicle. Then also it's just fun to talk about these. Every vehicle is different and they age differently and you know they're all they're all pretty fascinating. So let's go ahead and look at this 2000 LX470 that's on Bring a Trailer. It's currently bid up to $10,000. It's got five days left and yeah, it appears that it's um, yeah moderately to, to heavily modified. So let's go through the details here on the right. It is located in Reno, Nevada. It has 100, 100 95,000 miles. Uh, of course, it's got the 4.7 liter V8. That's the 2UZ FE. Uh, it being a 2000, it'll have a sport four speed automatic transmission, right? That change didn't happen until 2003. And yeah, locking center differential, cashmere beige metallic. And yeah, don't lose sight that this is the, um, even though it's heavily modified, this is an LX, right? Not a Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, but yeah, on the list of modifications, it's got aftermarket Rock Warrior wheels, which are, um, yeah, kind of like very sought after um, as far as wheels go for both the 100 series and the 200 series. I think you need to run spacers with them, unfortunately, though. Um, yeah, the offset's a little, little wonky. Anyway, uh, it's got Iron Man shocks, uh, LED lights, a rooftop tent, an awning associated with that. We've got rock sliders, a worn winch, descent skid and belly plate intake snorkel front and rear cameras and yeah pioneer stereo and yeah service records and clean carfax report so yeah pretty well pretty well modified here all right moving to the description here on the left uh this uh, cashmere beige metallic um it's actually kind of two-tone there's a kind of like a tan lower and yeah it looks like we've got old manny move front torsion bars right so the 100 series land cruiser doesn't have like coil overs or anything it uses torsion bars uh, for the front and then it's got um, a 2.5 inch lift for the rear i'm assuming because there's a bumper there that it's kind of like a heavy um, type of spring but anyway the seller acquired the truck in 2020 and the timing belt and water pump were replaced just recently in april 2023 it's got 195,000 miles and it's got a no reserve. Uh, this is a no reserve auction, which is great. Uh, I'm going to do my clapping now, which sometimes sounds like uh, yeah, an illicit <laughs> sexual activity. It's got a clean Nevada title in the seller's name, so that's good. Hopefully no hiccups there on transferring it. Uh, so we've got an ARB front bumper descent, off-road rear bumper uh, descents, one of the uh, you know, kind of like niche um, uh, you know, fabricators does a really good job. Uh, let's see, we've got some lights on it, a descent off-road skid plate and belly plate, an intake snorkel, and a yeah, 12,000 pound winch. That's nice that they went big there. Uh, this rooftop tent is mounted with a front runner aluminum roof rack, uh, and it's got yeah, overland vehicle systems awnings, rotopax jerry cans. It's got all of the overlanding, uh, <laughs> using the term that's used on the Expedition Portal, farkles. It's got all the overlanding farkles and off-road farkles. Uh, we've got scratches and other blemishes uh, that are in the gallery and photos of body panel VIN tags. So that's a nice touch. All right, so these Rock Warrior wheels, uh, those were found on the, uh, the Tundra, second gen Tundra, and yeah, line cruiser folks both 100 and 200 series since it's the same bolt pattern yeah they really like them but yeah it's got some like 34 inch nitto ridge grappler tires and yeah we've been through the suspension looks like we've got in addition to that we've got some um, aftermarket upper control arms uh, timber and bump stops and um, some sway bar extensions uh, they don't mention like a cv uh, or a diff drop uh, the steering rack, lower ball joints, and tie rod ends were replaced in 2020. Uh, we'll see that that was done right after the um, yeah this seller picked it up, and it looks like CV axles and hubs were installed in October of 2020. Uh, brake service under current ownership is consisted of replacing the front brake rotors and pads in 2021 and the rear pads in 2022. Uh, the cabin features tan leather seats and burl wood veneers. That's very common for these line cruisers. It's been wired for a CB radio, and it's got a uh, Pioneer touchscreen with CarPlay and all the good stuff, front and rear cameras. It's nice. Looks like speakers have been added throughout. So, you know, that can be a, both a good and a bad thing. Um, that means somebody's been into the door panels, which, again, uh, if you follow my uh, 80 series build, um, yeah, sometimes people aren't so nice when they take those apart. But... Uh, in addition to that, we've got a 500 watt inverter, a Blue Sea automatic charging relay. Um, so it looks like it's yeah, 
modified uh, electrically, and we've got some additional LED lighting on the inside. WeatherTech floor mats and a fire extinguisher mount. Doesn't say that a fire extinguisher is included. And the seller notes that wiring for dash cam has been installed. Uh, the lock actuators have been an intermittent issue, and is wearing, where is noted on the seats and the driver's side armrest. So, yeah, regarding the lock actuators, it's a very common thing. Not too hard to get those done. Um, you can either just replace the motor or you can, you know, find an, an uh, a whole actuator uh, online. Uh, I'm guessing what's on the drawer here is the fire extinguisher mount. It's kind of nice that it's easily accessible, but yeah, you still need to, you know, imagine something's on fire. You need to open up the arm here for the rear bumper, uh, open the upper hatch, and then drop the tailgate in order to get that out. So not, you know, not nearly as convenient as, yeah, it could be. Uh, let's see. So the third row seats have been removed. It doesn't say if they are included or not. We also have a uh, tailgate storage thing. Those can be pretty handy. Uh, not so great if you're like kneeling on your tailgate, but yeah, it is nice to throw some stuff in there. And yeah, you've got a cargo barrier that separates the passenger compartment from the cargo area. And yeah, you know, we've kind of got a full um, setup here for a drawer and looks like a fridge slide. I'd assume it's wired back there. Uh, it looks like, yeah, there is a 12 volt outlet. So uh, it looks like this, the brand of this is Big Country 4x4, or sorry, that's actually the tailgate thing. I'm not familiar with them, but you know, there's a handful of uh, vendors that supply yeah, little tailgate things like this um, moving to the interior oh that um yeah that little stereo that pioneer that's actually quite nice a nice big screen doesn't really seem too intrusive uh let's see and since 2020 they've put 27,000 miles on it which is yeah pretty pretty good clip there uh we do have aftermarket horns in the engine bay uh, moving through this, a second battery has been added to the engine bay, so you can see that. Uh, I'd assume this had automatic or adjustable height control, the AHC system, um, but that's likely been removed and the battery's been put in place there. Uh, consistent for the age, the valve cover gasket, spark plugs, and PCV valve have been replaced. That was done in 2021, and a replacement alternator was installed in 2022, which could have been due to age, could just be to use as well. And then, yeah, it looks like in 2023, they replaced the timing belt, water pump, fan clutch, bracket, and serpentine belt. So it sounds like they did a lot there on the front of the engine, which that's kind of how you should do it. Uh, a quick peek at the undercarriage looks pretty good. Uh, it does mention here that it does have a slee differential drop kit and the front differential was rebuilt in 2022. Um, so that rebuild could indicate just maybe they decided to, um, but also could indicate that they, you know, they maybe, you know, were using it off road and, you know, perhaps suffered um, a failure there. Um, just based on the look and the mileage, yeah, I'd assume that they, they use this pr pretty heavily for those 27,000 miles. Uh, the seller notes an exhaust leak when cold and a replacement gasket is included in the cell, although, yeah, you probably don't want to do that work. <laughs> uh, nice of them to include that, though. It's one of those things that, yeah, you kind of get to it when, when you can. Uh, okay, so it looks like the seats, the removed third row seats, those are included. And then we've got some spare CV axles and the removed set of wheels. So that's a nice touch, nice add-on. Uh, the Carfax report shows no accidents or other damage in this history in California and Nevada. So let's go ahead and take a peek at that. Uh, let me zoom in here for you. And yeah, last owned in Nevada. We've got California and Nevada here on the right. And then, yeah, originally sold into Modesto in August of 2020, or excuse me, 2000. And yeah, mileage is ticking up through the first, what, the first owner. Sorry, that's actually owner two. Uh, owner one doesn't really count. So the first owner, they had it through about 100,000 miles. Uh, they sold it. They were in the Bay Area and then went, it to, Sac went to Sacramento for another yeah, 40,000 miles and three years. And then let's see, 2017, another owner again in the Bay Area. And then looks like it, um, yeah, 168 so thousand miles it went to Nevada to the current owner. Um, so that's that. Not a ton of um, you know information here in the Carfax. So if you're interested in this, be sure to pull this up in um, Lexus's service history website, and you can you know probably get a download of the maintenance records there. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this up in vehicle history. Um, I'm interested to see if we can get a, a listing for when they bought it in 2020, which, yeah, we might. So this might be the status of it in yeah 2019, 2020 when they picked it up. Uh, let's see. So it looks like we've got a, the winch on there at that point. It looks like a still cable. Um, everything else, we've got the, the front runner roof rack, the snorkel, the front bumper, um, sliders, the wheels. So all that was done 
um, before the seller picked it up. And let's see, do we get a price? We do get a price. Uh, so the price, it was originally listed at um, yeah, 29000 and then ended up um, maybe selling at twenty four or roughly around there. So, all right, so that's a great data point moving forward. Um, this vehicle also was listed on I Hate Mud before um, before going to bring a trailer. So yeah, definitely I'll include the link to this. So be sure to check that out. It's got a, you know a few more details, and um, yeah, obviously the price isn't there anymore. Bring a trailer rules kind of you know dictate them pulling that off. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, what we were seeing there on the back of the drawer, that does not look to be the um, the mount there for the fire extinguisher, but for a little axe. Uh, let's see. So yeah, nothing else in those photos. You know, you can review this, um, you know, put a little bit of attention to those. Um, also, you know, you could review the seller's post history. Um, nothing, you know, everything here is pretty much uh, benign as far as I can tell it. Um, just talks a little bit about some of the uh, the initial work they had to do, and then um, yeah, they suffered one of the ignition failures. So you know, be sure to check that out. Um, you know, it might be interesting if you're in the you know if you're interested in this vehicle. Uh, let's see, but let's go ahead and jump into the photos, and yeah, let's see what we can see. Yeah, so first impressions are pretty good from at least this distance. You can't tell if there's you know much um, what do you call it uh, pinstriping. Um, I'd assume if it's been used off-road, yeah, we'll find that. But yeah, it's definitely been uh, pretty well outfitted, it looks like. Um, moving around here to the front, those gaps all look good. Uh, the ARB bumper kind of hides a lot of that, but yeah, for the most part, this all looks good from the front. Moving across to the side, maybe a little bit more substantial scratch on the front passenger fender. Um, but everything seems pretty consistent paint-wise um, across the vehicle. Uh, the lift seems pretty well suited. Uh, this awning, it's a yeah, kind of a 270 degree awning. It'll kind of swing all the way around to the back. Yeah, this rear bumper is yeah a nice touch. They've only got one um, swing out. You'll notice there is a provision for the other one. I, I don't know. I feel like that would, unless you had that second one, that, that mount would kind of bump me, bother me a little bit. But as yeah, so we swing around, you can see they've got some mounts installed for like antennas and such, um, you know, in between the, the upper hatch and the rear quarter. Uh, also, this bumper, uh, it does have like a provision for a second arm. Uh, that little tab sticking out would kind of bother me, but I, yeah, I understand that's kind of what they have to do. Um, but yeah, looking from the rear here, that all looks good. They've got the light relocated or the license plate. I'd assume there's light as well. And it looks like there's a mount here for like a um, one of those kind of farm jacks. But yeah, it looks like a pretty, pretty clean build here. Um, here it is in full overlanding mode with all of the uh, farkles deployed. <laughs> and yeah, looks good. Seems like a nice place where they got the photos taken. Actually, I think I know where this is. I've, I've camped up here. <laughs> uh, yeah, just outside of Reno. I think this is on the, um, yeah, just on like the north, uh, or excuse me, southwest part of town. Yeah, maybe it's a slightly different spot, but yeah, it looks familiar in any case. Yeah, so there's a better look of that scratch there on the front fender. It looks like it's been touched up. I think I can see a little bit more pinstriping, so it's probably fair to assume that there's yeah, quite a bit of pinstriping on the vehicle. But yeah, some of these modifications, yeah, they can add some value. Um, you know, and so we'll, we'll see that I think in the, um, in the final price estimation, uh, uh interesting, I, I'm guessing that these are the lights here. So we're looking through the cover on the spare tire on the back that, yeah, these are lights for like a license plate light, <laughs> uh, I'd assume, but yeah, since they've got a cover there, you can't really see it. So yeah, maybe that license plate isn't lit up. Um, but yeah, maybe they don't have any issues with the popo. Um, these brackets, they seem better than most. Looks like they're made out of stainless steel, which is a nice touch. And looks like we've caught a couple rocks on the glass headlight here. So that, that probably needs, I don't know, it could be addressed, right? Uh, yeah, there's evidence of your kind of pinstriping here on the mirrors. Yeah, on both sides. So yeah, it's probably fair to assume that that's going to be consistent throughout the vehicle. It looks like that still line was replaced, although they didn't replace the fair lead. And yeah, there's your pinstriping. Looks like a little bit of dent, um, both right here on this line, this body line, but also a, a kind of like a, a longer crease going on there. Uh, yeah, something caught this. This is on the rear um, driver's side door. Little paint chipping there, and then there's that front uh, fender scratch. 
And then, yeah, just more scratches here on the lower hatch. Detail shots of the wheels, yeah, those seem to be all in order. Uh, you'll notice that this particular wheel, the front ones, they're not going to have a center cap. Those center caps that come with these Rock Warrior wheels, yeah, they can't clear the um, little cap there on the uh, on the axle. But yeah, on the rear, you can you can see those there. And then I, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's going to be um, spacers back behind these. I'll also note that these um, these little rings, you know, these aren't they look like beadlocks, but they're not real beadlock wheels. It's just a cosmetic thing. Um, but yeah, this um, seller or the owner before it, yeah, they've painted this ring. Normally, it's a kind of a bright and shiny, um, yeah, chrome finish there. But yeah, looking behind, everything seems okay. Not seeing any obvious signs of corrosion. Uh, looking here at the spare, one of these, and this is one of the knocks on these particular wheels, these Rock Warrior wheels, is that you end up with this kind of ring, this bling ring. Uh, you end up with uh, galvanic corrosion occurring between the aluminum wheel and like these stainless steel screws that makes them like season there. So it looks like at least on this one, um, this wheel, one of the screws is either broken off or rounded off. I didn't see any others on the wheels that were on the vehicle. Um, the seller did note in the comments that they do a five, a full five wheel rotation, which is nice. So, but obviously that doesn't affect um, functionality at all. It uh, looks like they've got another off-roader. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's got 80 series Land Cruiser wheels, but that front end doesn't really look like a like an 80 series Land Cruiser. Maybe we'll get a peek in some of the other photos. Moving to the interior, this carpet and everything, that looks actually quite nice for the mileage and the off-road usage. Seems like it's been you know cleaned up and put away you know, well after usage. Uh, the leather here on the driver door handle is yeah, wearing away. Um, steering wheel seems like it's in good shape, the, although you do have some wear through the perforations there, and then yeah, just normal wear on the seat. Uh, it wouldn't be a Land Cruiser without the seatbelt sagging, and looks like it's just a little discolored as well. All right, you can see the LED lighting here in this photo, and then yeah, just moving here to the driver's seat, yeah, you can see this wear. This is gonna be very typical, just a simple, you know, leather, you know, recover kit will yeah, take care of most of that. Again, you can see this leather wear on the arm and then also the color likes to wear off where your elbow rests and that appears to be happening here on this driver door. Otherwise, the driver door looks good. The little um, fabric over the speaker grill is intact and yeah, you can see some detail, a detail shot there of that grab handle. Passenger seat looks better than the driver's seat. You got a little wire coming out for, I assume, the head unit and yeah, passenger carpet and seat seem just well as well. A uh, little bit of discoloration here on the seat belt, again, as you'd expect for something that's been used um, like this. A little bit more wear on the fabric over the speaker grill, but yeah, otherwise the door card looks good. Uh, moving back to the driver cockpit area, we've got some switches that are unlabeled. I presume those are for all the different lights. Um, I don't really see something like a Switch Pro in here, so yeah, maybe there's something else going to, on to control all of those different lights. I'd assume there's some differentiation between, you know, because there's, I don't know, like, it, at least I saw three pairs of different lights. But steering wheel seems okay. It seems, you know, like it's not, not too bad. Uh, so here's confirmation that this LX470 did have automatic height control or adjustable height control. But yeah, that's likely been defeated. Doesn't look like there's any warning lights on. Yeah, so in this photo, we've got a warm engine. The idle is good, oil pressure's good, and everything seems normal there. But yeah, 195, 415,000 miles. Uh, nice touch again on the screen. Everything looks yeah, quite tidy and clean here. We do have like an aftermarket. I'd assume this is like a trailer brake controller. Um, yeah, not my favorite spot. And then yeah, it looks like that, again, because I've got lung legs and yeah, it could be installed in a different spot, but uh, makes it easily accessible, I guess. But then, yeah, this little trim panel is not sitting down where it should. And it seems like there's a little bit of a gap between the uh, little trim ring here around the ignition. In the I Hate Mud post history, he did mention having the, the rod that exists in this ignition cylinder brake. Um, so maybe that just wasn't put back properly. I, I don't know, but just something to look at. Uh, overall, the wood veneers seem like they're in really good shape. Uh, not seeing like the normal wear here on this. Um, everything looks good there. There's the wear on the driver armrest. Then I will note, it looks like the little covers for the rear seats, those aren't there. Those, those should have covers back here. Um, opening up the center console. Uh, it's nice to not have the, uh, you know, like the CD player and that nonsense in there. Um, yeah. Moving to the second row. Second row seats just have some creases and some minor wear. Those look, yeah, just fine. There's your for sale tag. Looks like it was also trying to sell it locally. 
Um, yeah, everything looks good there in the second row. There's that cargo barrier. Seems well installed. Yeah, and it looks like that attaches to the third row um, grab handles there. So that's nice integration. Um, carpet in the second row looks good. Seatbacks look good as well. Uh, little little mark it looks like here on the passenger door, but otherwise that looks good. Or sorry, yeah, rear driver door and then the rear passenger door similarly looks just fine. Uh, looks like the the lights here for the overhead console they've replaced with some like red, so maybe not to obstruct or you know to hurt your um, yeah nighttime vision. So that's kind of a nice touch. You can see a, a little um, microphone for Bluetooth, I'd presume. Uh, carpet underneath the floor mat in the driver spot looks good. Same thing with the passenger. Oh, and there's your, so it's, yeah, one of those little like uh, extinguisher stick mounts, not a full fire extinguisher, but it, it does have this, uh, is this Owl Expedition? It does have like a more substantial mount behind it that I'm sure you could attach anything to if you wanted a bigger fire extinguisher. All right, moving to the back here. Yeah, we've got this spot for a fridge. Uh, it looks like it's not, and I don't know what part came, oh, that's right. We did get a name brand for the, um, for the tailgate portion it looks like that's you know wood or polycarbonate or something but yeah looks like we didn't get name brand stuff for the the drawer and the fridge setup we've just got some kind of like you know some rudimentary still structure here but it seems like it's attached to the floor through the third round third row seat mounts and yeah it seems like it's you know functional um nice deep drawer all right so there's a detail shot of the tailgate storage um, also, you'll notice that the wiring, so I'd assume this is wiring that goes out maybe for, well, yeah, maybe for the trailer. I, I don't know exactly what this is. Maybe, oh, maybe it's lights. But yeah, they just ran it out through the through the weather strip there. Probably not a big deal, but yeah, just something to know how that was done. There's always trade-offs, you know, as to how you mount the stuff. Here's your inverter. Looks like you've got a little switch and some additional storage underneath here. And yeah, moving to the engine bay, we've got VIN stickers on both sides. Engine bay seems quite clean. Everything, seem, everything seems in order. Uh, we've got yeah, aftermarket horns, got the SLE, um, yeah, second or first battery, primary battery with a nice big fat AGM in there. That's a nice touch. And then, yeah, I'm not quite sure what type of battery besides it being a Duracell brand um, there. But yeah, second mount there, that's a nice touch as well. And yeah, everything seems in order in the engine bay. Yeah, nothing really screaming at me. We've got some, you know, some additional wiring. Let's see, did we get a shot of the primary battery? Yeah, so we're gonna have wiring for the winch coming off here. That's probably this big, fat, thick cable, both off the positive and the negative. And yeah, seems like it's in order, in pretty good shape. I'm uh, moving to the undercarriage. Yeah, corrosion, at least on the con front control arms, is minimal. Uh, some scratches and dings on this little skid. Um, CV axles, you can tell, have been replaced. But yeah, it looks dry. Rear axle looks dry, relatively rust-free. Uh, for the rear bumper, the modif or the exhaust has been modified. And um, yeah, you could drop this spare tire um, carrier if you wanted, since you've got one on the back. Um, moving here to the front, this is the front passenger side corner. Uh, just a little bit of corrosion here on this kind of recovery point, but everything seems yeah good and dry and clean. A little seepage on that steering rack. Uh, look into the post history on I Hate Mud because they did mention a little bit of a leak there. Maybe that has or hasn't been addressed. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's actually nice. You can get in for that uh, um, that oil filter quite nice. It's, it's a nice design on that skid plate. I appreciate that. The factory skid, yeah, you got to pretty much take it off or take off that cover to get in there. Um, looking at the exhaust, that's what we're seeing here corrosion-wise. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that. And moving back, the fuel tank skid plate all looks good. Just some minor corrosion. You can also see, you know, wear from, you know, being off-road of, you know, running on rocks and going down gravel roads. You know, like the lower part of the shock mount's just basically been sandblasted away. Um, you know, so it's had some off-road use and just, you know, something to be aware of um, yeah, if, you're, if you're picking this thing up. But otherwise, things look dry and relatively clean under here. No, you know, huge warning signs there. Tires look like they've got plenty of tread. Um, the upper front suspension looks good. And yeah, we'll get into the Vince stickers here. Um, it looks like we didn't get a full set, but yeah, we, I think between this and the, uh, the other photos, yeah, you probably have everything that you need. Uh, let's see, handful of receipts, support over those if you're interested. There's your third row seats. Uh, looks like the original wheels. Uh, not only do we have a missing or an unmatching fifth, um, but yeah, they've had, 
a certain amount of yeah, work <laughs> done to them. I'll call it that way. There's some additional CV axles that were mentioned and yeah, we're back out. Yeah. So this one's going to be a little bit tough, tough to price because of all of the off-road modifications. They seem relatively well done. Uh, kind of the only demerits I would say would be on just the, while it's functional, the rear stuff is a little you know, crude, we'll say, you know, it's not as polished as like a goose gear thing, but you know, again, this is like a 23, you know, plus year old truck. So, um, yeah, you shouldn't expect it to be perfect. So mileage is relatively good. Um, I think my like reference point for something like this being, you know, let's say like mm, between 150 and 200,000 miles for a hundred series early year, hundred series line cruiser is generally around like high teens, maybe 20,000. And so I think with all the off the off-road modifications, I think that maybe bumps you up a little bit. So there's a, there's a chance this will close above 20. Um, I, again, remember they bought this roughly as it is, um, you know, besides doing some maintenance work is described in the I hate mud thread, um, in comments from that, from the seller. Um, you know, they, they maybe paid, you know, 24,000. So I think if they were to get, you know, like 20, 21, 22 out of that, that'd probably be pretty good. Um, look for this one, maybe to, you know, to surprise and end up in the mid teens. But I think my, my guess with it being a no reserve auction is yeah, 21, 500. Let's, let's go there and yeah, see where it ends up. So that's this one. I hope you appreciate looking over this. This is a, you know, it seems like a well-built, capable truck, ready to, ready to go. And if somebody wants to yeah, instantly look, look cool. Yeah. Look no further. Um, appreciate you checking out the channel. Please have a good day and I'll see you for the next one.